the board calling to order the city council meeting of the city of Lather Village. Madam Clerk, can you do roll call, please? Yes. Roll call. Mayor Garrett. Here. Mayor Pro Tem Cantor. Present. Council Member Ferguson. Present. Council Member Siddiqui. Here. And Council Member Stallings. Present. Madam Mayor, you have a quorum. Thank you. I invite everyone to say the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to, to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Can I have an approval of the agenda, please? Or if there's any corrections. So moved. Second. It's been moved and second. All in favor, say aye. Aye. All opposed? The agenda has been approved for the consent agenda. Need approval for that. We'll make a so, motion for the approval of the consent agenda. Second. It's been moved and second. Is there any discussion? Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? The consent agenda is approved. Um, first, we'll do the consideration, uh, the improvement of the dis <coughs> disbursement reports. The first one is disbursement periods February 1st, 2019 to February 15th, 2019 for $51,375.77. The second one is disbursement period uh, February 16th, 2019 to February 28th, 2019 in the amount of $382,127.66. Hey, you. Question. Oh. I'll make a motion to uh, uh, approve the disbursement uh, periods of February 1st, uh, 2019 to February 15th for $51,375 and the disbursement period from February 16th to February 28th for $382,127. Second. Yes, move, move to second. Is there any discussion? I have a discussion on the other one. On which one? the February 1st through the 28th. Um, so uh, page 21 on, uh, it's, it's almost in the middle where it says uh, mileage and food reimbursement. I know it's a small number, but is that? Is that $137.29? Yeah. yeah. For Aaron? Yes. Um, who's, I'm not sure who Aaron is. The deputy treasurer. Okay. And I believe that was when he attended a conference. Okay, all right. Uh, the other question I had was uh, general matters for Keller Thoma. Mm -hmm. What page is that? Page uh, 22, 123.75. It's like closer to the top. And then the other one was Stephen H. Schwartz. Replace CK. I'm not sure what that is. So general matters. The, the one related to... Schwartz is our labor attorney, and I believe there was a couple of phone calls between me and the chief that we needed um, some feedback from him. And the Keller Toma, I'll ask Pam Bereschke to come up. Okay. is our labor attorney right now and that was the small between the chief and um, Cheryl Schwartz that is a check that was avoided because he never um, after a year he found it and so he um, gave us back the check and asked if it could be reissued to him and that was under Schwartz because he's no longer goes by Steve Schwartz's firm now he is under Keller Toma. so you, re you reissued the check is that what you did right but it was just voided so it was a wash okay um, Maybe you can answer this because I have two more right here. Okay. So, so uh, I have one that says Michigan State dis disbursement spousal support. Yeah, we have a, somebody that through payroll has to have spousal support. Okay, taken okay, out. and that's the, the the second one also. For the okay. child support, yes. Okay. Uh, I think um, that's any it. Any other ones? No, that's it. Yeah. Okay. I have a quick one. Okay. And it's, <clears throat> it may be obvious, but I noticed that on a couple of the when you go to the budget used. Um, amount used it's already up to 95 percent and 90 in some of the areas so you automatically revamp that unless I'm reading this incorrectly 
We um, did some um, budget amendments last council meeting, and then we will do more budget amendments at the end of the year in June. Okay. So do they run over because it looks like this one, like the taxes, you're already at 95%. That's the city taxes? Yes. That's what we've collected so far. Okay. Um, those will be, as soon as I do the settlement with the county, which I'm working on right now, uh, hopefully by April 1st, they will pay out the rest of our money, and then those will be at their max of what they should be. Okay. So those all. Yeah, that's just what we haven't collected. We've collected 95% of our money so far for the taxes. Okay. That's great. And then just a quick question for... I was just curious, someone came in to get um, a document signed for a job application to the police department. What was that about? I'm sorry, say that again? I didn't know we did that. Uh, an individual came to the police department. I was just curious to get a, have a document signed for a job on a job application. Uh, the individual is opening up an uh, investigative firm here, and according to the uh, board of Regulation, uh, she has to have a signature from either the Chief of Police or the Sheriff. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that makes sense. Okay. Okay. Thank you. I was sure that you didn't, all the students that wanted jobs came to the police <laughs> department <laughs> for you. So I knew that there was a reason behind it. Thank you. Yes. Any more questions? No. All in favor of approval of the disbursement report, say aye. 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 All opposed? Reference reports are approved. Next, we'll do the consideration and acceptance of the departmental reports. <coughs> I'll make a motion for the acceptance of the departmental reports. Second. It's been moved and second. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? The departmental reports are accepted. Now it comes to a point in our agenda where we will um, open up to public comments, and this is for the items that are not on tonight's agenda. And if you would come to the microphone, you do not have to give your address, but if you could give your name, that would be great. And first up, nope, are you coming? Oh, second. Oh, are you on here? Are you? Oh, never mind, you're under, sorry. Reading is fundamental. Oh. <laughs> Anyone? Oh. Hi, um, my name is Joe Robinson, um, a resident now for five years of Lathrop Village, and I live on Lake Lathrop, and I'm concerned about the study group that's being formed or the committee that's being formed to uh, review the drainage, the sidewalks. I actually am in the financial controller for the City of Detroit Water Department, have a lot of experience, and I'm very, very eager and willing to serve on that committee. So I wanted to introduce You're, myself. We'd love to have you. Yeah. Um, okay. did, very good. Did you, there, there's I an filled out the application. Yeah, yes. great. Thank you. Thank you. Excellent to have you. Is it, is it Jill or Joe? Joe. 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 Thanks. Joe Rowe. Good to meet you. You said that you're with uh, DWSD now? I am. Okay. I do. So there's a meeting at 1 o'clock on Thursday, right? That's so just for us. Internal. Okay. Just for us. Internal. Internal. Okay. Hello. Hello. Hi. I'm Debbie. Um, I'm here for Horless Gardens tonight. Actually, Ed is supposed to be here, but is not quite yet. Um, I live at 27440 Lathrop Boulevard. Uh, the reason I'm here tonight is Cheryl asked us to come and speak a little bit about the activities that will be going on um, through the Horless Garden Center, but really community programming for the spring and summer this year. Uh, and it is kicking off on April 27th with an Arbor Day and Earth Day uh, program. We are planning to uh, plant a tree in honor and in memory of one of the founders of the Children's Garden, Oswald Martin. Mm. And um, Ed uh, had a meeting with Cheryl a couple weeks ago and uh, went through all of the, the programming that we have solidified so far and uh, about Arbor Day and Earth Day. So she asked that we come tonight. And then there's another meeting before the, at the actual event. So we'll give you more information about it at that time. But I do have um, flyers if you guys would like to 
to have those um, tonight. What and then, time is it on April 27th? It's going to be at starting at 10 in the morning. Okay. And we're going to do, in years past, there's been a little bike parade with mm -hmm. um, decorate your bike, and then we separate uh, the age groups to um, get little prizes. So we're going to do that as well, and a couple other activities. I missed too, you said you're planting the tree in honor of, was it a person that you Oswald. Said? It Oswald. is Oswald Martin, okay. one of the founders of the Children's Garden. Oh, wonderful. Okay. Yes. Can we give some visibility so Hordless Gardens, uh, in case everyone's trying to figure out where it is, it was quote unquote a pop up at um, uh, Annie Lathrop School. Thank you. And it's going to be a pop up again this year. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Same yeah. location. Same location. Okay. Two seven seven zero zero um, Southfield Road. It's actually the um, the one of the parking lots for the old school. Yep. That's where it will be. Okay, thank you. Is that it? Yep. Yeah, All right, that's, that's how you finish. <laughs> this is very, thank, thank you. you. Thanks for the schedule. Yeah. There is there anyone else that would like to be heard? Okay, we'll close the uh, public comments. We don't have a public hearing, so we'll start off now. That's cheap. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. If I can have Officer Tackett and Officer Elharani come up with this. It's kind of an exciting day. You guys can stand right here. Uh, <clears throat> exciting day for the police department in the city of Lathrop Village. Uh, we have two full-time officers starting uh, today. And uh, Officer Elharani actually is going to be our 10th full-time officer here. At one point, 20-some uh, years ago, there was 12 of us. But we're slowly building back up to that uh, that full structure. So, um, Officer Tackett comes to us from the city of Garden, uh, Garden City, uh, where he retired. Uh, came over in December of 2018, started part time with us, and has now accepted a full time position. And Officer El Harani is just fresh out of the academy, uh, just turned 21, and as you can see, she's got a lot of family members here. <laughs> so, wonderful. If I could get the city clerk to swear them in. Separately, that would be great. I, Sar El Harani, do solemnly swear or firm, do solemnly swear or firm that I will support, that I will support the Constitution of the United States, the Constitution of the United States, the Constitution of the State of Michigan, the Constitution of the State of Michigan, uphold all federal laws, uphold all federal laws, state laws, state laws. And ordinances for the city of Lathrop Village. And ordinances for the city of Lathrop Village. And I will discharge my duties. And I will discharge my duties. A full-time police officer. A full-time police officer. For the city of Lathrop Village, Michigan. For the city of Lathrop Village, Michigan. According to the best of my ability. According to the best of my ability. Congratulations. <laughs> Do solemnly swear or affirm that I will support the Constitution. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. Of the United States. The Constitution of the State of Michigan. The Constitution of the State of Michigan. Uphold all federal laws. Uphold all federal laws. State laws. State laws. And ordinances of the City of Lathrop Village. And ordinances of the City of Lathrop Village. And I will discharge my duties. And I will discharge my duties. A full-time police officer. Full-time police officer. For the City of Lathrop Village, Michigan. To the city of Lathrop Village, Michigan. According to the best of my ability. According to the best of my ability. Thank you. Would you like?
like to say something? <laughs> sure. Sure, why not? Well, thank you all for um, having me. Um, okay. the, this department, I really chose another department. I was selected about where I chose. I wanted to have a, I came from a small community, um, six square miles, 30,000 people, and that, I really enjoyed the relationship that I could have with the community and with the city council, knowing each other and you're not just kind of like a, a number. Um, I really am dedicated to bringing all the skills, knowledge, and abilities that I learned from Garden City, and they all paid for, to Lathrop Village. So thank you, um, we them. and I'm, I'm very happy to be here, and you have a wonderful department, and I'm glad to be a part of it. Thank you. Sure. 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 You get your flowers. Oh, I love it for me. We want to see the flower. We want to see the flower. Please. I just want to say thank you so much for this opportunity. I wouldn't have chosen another department besides Lathrop. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Glad to have you. Well, that is a um, nice. nice segue into where we're going next. Uh, <laughs> next up, we'll have the consideration of um, to approve the second reading and adoption of the ordinance to, well, I'll let someone else read all of it, but I'll turn to you. Turn to city so attorney. The, okay, this is, the, uh, this is the second time this is coming for you, second reading, as you indicated. This was previously last month, something that council had requested. Uh, an ordinance for the city to opt out of both recreational and medical marijuana. There is a sunset provision in this ordinance that uh, allows the city, well, the city has to revisit this within um, 18 months, otherwise this ordinance expires. So it, it does provide the city with an opportunity to collect some data from other communities that may elect to opt in and then make a, a more informed decision at a point in the future as to whether or not they want to retain this ordinance opting out or um, opt in at a later date. So this is the second reading. This uh, will become effective upon publication if, if approved this evening. Okay. And a motion? I'll make a motion to approve the second reading and adoption of the ordinance to amend Chapter 18 businesses adding Article 6, Marijuana Establishment, Section 18.281, Marijuana Establishments Prohibited, to prohibit marijuana establishments within the boundaries of the city pursuant to the Michigan Regulation and Taxation of Marijuana Act and provide penalties for violation of this ordinance. Second. It's been moved and second. Is there any questions or comments? Okay, I have a question, or I have a comment. Can you um, just, and I know you just explained it, but like in layman terms of what the 18 months looks like, I mean, is that an opportunity, just what we can do within those 18 months, what can actually happen? So it, really what happens is the, the city at any point in time has the ability to, to review any of their ordinances, uh, make revisions to them, repeal them, uh, change the language of their ordinances. What the sunset provision, all this does is it, it says that if nothing is done to this ordinance within 18 months, it goes away. It becomes non-effective. So the city, ha the city has options, just as it does with any other ordinance. They could revisit this ordinance sooner than 18 months. Uh, at the expiration of it, when this ordinance goes away, the city could choose to extend it and for either a, an additional period of time or indefinitely. Um, or they can make any modifications that they feel appropriate in the best interest of the citizens to this ordinance. Yeah, and I think the, the, the reason why we went with an 18-month um, uh, sunset provision was the more than likely what's going to happen is, the, at least based on what happened with uh, medical marijuana, it's probably not going to be till the end of the year until the state comes out with regulations for recreational marijuana, and more than likely the first licenses aren't going to start happening until probably the first quarter of, of 2020. So that gives us 18 months, takes us well beyond that first quarter, three or four months past that quarter, so at, at least maybe more. Um, but it gives us time to 
see what happens with other communities that, that imp do actually go ahead and implement recreational marijuana and medical marijuana for that, that matter. Uh, and then gives us some additional time to get some data to see what's going on in those communities and what effect it has so that we can make an informed decision. And we really felt that there really was no burning need to be a, you know, first out of the gate to do this. So we can take the lessons that we learned from other communities and then make a, a fully informed decision. I think the whole point is just to be very prudent to, to watch that sunset date and to decide even at that point, do we have enough information to go forward to make decisions? So I think we're just, we're just being prudent, just, just carefully want to evaluate it and do it properly. So we'll be watching that sunset date. So just so we're clear, after the 18 months, we just default back to where we are prior to um, activating this? If we don't do anything. If we don't Correct. If, we don't if, do if nothing happens, this, nothing this happens. ordinance, uh, and, and that's a good question, um, Councilman Ferguson, because right now under the medical marijuana, the default position is to opt out. So right. unless the uh, city affirmatively opts in, uh, all medical marijuana facilities are prohibited. Right. With recreational marijuana, the default is opting in. So what would happen is if this ordinance uh, were to expire without any action from council, Lather Village would be opted out of medical marijuana and opted in okay. to recreational marijuana. Right. That's where the confusion came in because there was a lot of concern with the residents. Yeah. Well, know, when they created the ordinance, there was they out. you know they decided yeah. to do the opposite of what they had already yes. had in yes. place. So exactly. you know, just keep everyone okay. on their toes. Yep. Thank it's you. On our toes. Any other discussion? Nope. Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Second is going to be, or third, excuse me, um, the consideration of a resolution in support. Do we need to ask any questions? Yeah, that, well, sure. I'm Go sorry. Ahead. <laughs> uh, just know, it already passed. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I was just going to ask, after the 18 months, is there, there going to be a public hearing or anything, or does the city council just decide whether we can have businesses in the city? Because according to the survey, more people were against um, recreational. So if that ends in 18 months, I mean, would there be a public hearing so before you just say, well, we're going to have a business on Southfield? Technically, it does not have to be a public hearing. We could have another town hall possibly if that's what the um, council would want to do at that time which you know I I'm think the residents would so want us so, to have yeah, yeah. So, so I'm yeah. we don't want any surprises okay <laughs> so yeah I would say Thank yes we can, <laughs> have a, we can have a uh, town hall um, meeting at that time Thank you. you're welcome I'm sure in 18 that. months yeah. we're gonna want to hear from the residents oh and I'm sorry we're also we're have, it, you know? I'm sorry you all go ahead absolutely <laughs> We want to hear what the residents have to say, right? So after 18 months, when we collect the data and determine, okay, is this what's happening in these other cities, we can bring it to our residents and say, this is what we found out. What do you guys think now? And then, then you guys have elected us to kind of represent you guys, right? So we'll, you know, we'll take everything into consideration and make the decision. Yeah. So what, what I was going to say was the fact is that we're putting together a task force to figure out um, what's best for the city. So it could be before 18 months. We're not, it's not up to, we get to 18 months and now we have to make a decision. This is something that I, I'm hoping that our goal is, is that we're gonna be working towards, you know, making a decision or bringing it back to the residents with more informed, um, be more informed, have more information, um, know what other cities have done. So it's, it's the 18 months is not the, the end date per se. It's just to give us some time to be able to, to get our stuff together for the most part. Yeah. So it's not a no. It might be just a not yet, or it might be a, a no, never. I mean, we just don't know where it's at right now. But I'm open. We're open to have um, another town hall meeting. Definitely. And we Definitely. do plan on being forthright with every step we take. We've been forthright we've, we've with been everything going forward. So with, with the residents. So. <laughs> so you don't have to worry about that. Yeah. <laughs> so any other questions? I will How are you? Come on up. Um, do you have this task force already uh, convened, appointed, or yes, and yes. who is going to be on it? Are you asking yes. any uh, residents to be on it? Yes. Any? Yes. 
Because I haven't seen anything. I mean, Actually, it's I'm been not. I don't. I have nothing to add to it, but I'm sure there's expertise within the population of medical people, counselors, mm -hmm. you know, things like that. I'm just wondering how big is the task force? Do you have categories of people that you are hoping are going to be on it? What can you tell us about the task force? So I was hoping that the task force was already posted because I know that it is a part of it. Okay, so uh, part of the application. Um, it's going to be comprised of um, residents, someone from city council, law enforcement, I'm hoping someone that is a, a medical provider, mm -hmm. someone who's pro, somebody who's con. It's going to be a really, it's going to be a diverse group of people to come together for the task force. You can find the application on our website, and there is an actual checkbox on there to become a part of this task force. Okay. And will there be any reporting mechanism from this task force to the residents as meetings progress? I mean, I don't even know if that's appropriate, well, the, but I'm just asking. The, the goal would be, to me, would be that probably, what, quarterly or sooner to have something reported back to council. You know, maybe every, every time they meet, they can come back and have someone that can give us a report about it. But it's to keep you very much informed of what we find out. Mm -hmm. Because whatever decision that we make is going to be very, um, we're going to be very informed about it. It's not going to be haphazardly done. Right. And residents will be informed as well Absolutely. as these meetings occur? or well, as reports are created so when they do the reports hopefully that'll be done at these type of meetings so okay. they will be recorded so you can get it off of youtube mm -hmm. it's going to be a public forum you can watch it on i'm not really sure what channels they are from all the uh tv stations okay. but you'll have mm -hmm. an opportunity to see this and to come to the public forums because we do also um publicize when we have our mm -hmm. meetings so mm -hmm. it'll be on there but okay. the goal of all of us here is to keep everyone very well informed mm -hmm. of what's going on with that good thank you you're welcome and on the city's website I just want to make a note of that I forgot to say that thank you <laughs> so is there anybody else that would like to talk about this now or have a, a, a want to have a comment on it this is your chance anyone <clears throat> okay, so now we'll move on to the uh, consideration and approval of the resolution to support of the reinstatement of the state historic tax credit Senate Bill 54, House Bill 4100. Who's introducing that one? Mayor and Council, we um, received a request from the, um, the local historic preservation organization, and I don't know if they want to address this topic as well. In regards to proposed legislation that has been introduced and it would provide for the um, tax credit to developers um, up to 25 percent of the amount spent to restore a structure that meets the various criteria for being historic and up to 90 percent of a credit valued below 250,000 which could be <coughs> refundable so this would be beneficial to our community considering some of the um, particularly the Lake School property, should a developer wish to um, access those credits. So it would be beneficial to our community as well as others for this legislation to move forward. Yeah. You're up. Hi. <laughs> Hi, Annette Kingsbury, San Jose Boulevard. Thanks for putting this on the agenda today. <coughs> I'm here to ask for your support for these two bills, Senate Bill 54 and House Bill 4100 which would bring back a credit that was previously in effect between 1999 and 2011. Uh, the bills provide for a state tax credit of up to 25% of qualified rehabilitation expenses for both commercial and residential properties within a historic district, and they tie into a federal income tax credit. The credits would be available to individual homeowners and business property owners. Uh, in the last legislative session, this measure passed the Senate by a wide margin, 36 to 2, and was reported favorably out of a House committee on an 8 to 2 vote, but was never brought to a vote before the full House, leaving Michigan one of only 15 states without this type of credit. Governor Whitmer is already on record as supporting this credit. She said in an interview that it serves an important public purpose, putting unusable property back into use or keeping a historic building in a lot of our downtowns that need revitalization. Um, the last time this was in effect, they leveraged 71 million in credits to generate 
1.46 billion in investment, and that's you know private investment. So it seems like kind of a no-brainer for the city because it's not a property tax credit; it's an income tax credit. Thank okay. you. Do I have a motion for it? So make a motion. Second. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Is there any questions or uh, comments? Is this a one and only reading or first reading? Or it's a resolution. Yeah, it's it's a resolution. resolution. So yeah, there's only one. Okay. One. Did you want to ask the other question now or later? You, Ian. Oh, regarding the... Yes. Yeah, so Annette, you probably are the expert in the room regarding this question I had for council earlier. So um, most residents um, in Lathrop know that Gordy Howe used to own a house in Lathrop. Mm -hmm. And I asked if it's possible that we could probably try to get some sort of designation, a historical designation, after, obviously after we go through this. Is that possible or is that something that may not be feasible? Okay. So um, is is there another designation, maybe a historical figure designation that yeah. we could pursue? There's I don't think so. Um, you know, we also have our local historic district commission, which you have um, designated city hall and the church right. and the school. So maybe that would be a consent. But um, you want to get probably consent of the homeowner. Yeah, that's what we talked about. Yep. Just thought I'd ask you first. Thank you. Any other questions? Nope. <laughs> it's been moved and seconded. <laughs> I already said that. Okay, all in the favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, the motion carries. And you're welcome. That is it for our uh, action requests. We will move on to the city administrator's report. Thank you, Mayor. As you are aware, we had the State of the City Address earlier today as part of the Southfield Chambers um, event, and Mayor Garrett was um, able to present her presentation on things that have happened and what we're looking forward to going forward in the City of Lathrop Village. It was recorded, so we look forward to having that available on our YouTube channels as well and Facebook. The um, and somewhat related to what's available online for the meetings, we started recording the Planning Commission meetings and we had the first one with the special meeting they had last week and we've already had a 300 percent increase in the number of viewers. Yeah. So it's definitely a venue in which um, people are very interested in gaining that access to information so we're moving forward with that. The um, staff positions, um, as you know, we have the two new officers. Welcome again. And um, we also have a um, conditional offer of employment for the Parks and Recreation Coordinator. Um, he should be starting on Monday. Um, we're just pending the um, physical exam. So we don't expect any difficulty with that. Clerk Yvette Talley will be attending the Michigan Association of Mun Municipal Clerk Training for the remainder of this week. So she will be out of the office but application packets are available for anyone who is interested in um, running for city council in the upcoming election. Susie Steck, the manager of community and economic development, she will be attending the National Main Street Conference, um, so she will be out of the office next week. And she provided a um, departmental report, which I gave you a hard copy of today. And Hordless Gardens, yes. and I see Ed Blondin is here. And we're very excited about partnering with him with a number of educational and activity-related um, programs that will be beneficial to the entire community. He's been a tremendous business partner for, for Lathrop Village. And the first one coming up, as was mentioned, is the, um, the Earth Day and Arbor Day celebration. And you'll have an actual proclamation on your April 15th agenda to celebrate that occasion. Okay, I know enough about technology to be dangerous. So we started an electronic newsletter, and the first editions went out this weekend. So we'll, we'll keep improving and enhancing and expanding it, but um, we already have, um, I think, over 300 people who are receiving it, and then it's reposted on Facebook. 
So it's getting a wide circulation and it seems an easier avenue to get information out to residents on a short-term basis instead of waiting for the quarterly um, newsletters that go to all the homes, which we will still be doing. And, and who do they contact to sign up for that? Either me or the clerk or anyone. And you can actually, if you're online, you can click, uh, you know, I want to join your list and it'll do it automatically. Um, we need to um, figure out a goal setting session, the dates that would work for that. So I'll be in contact with you in regards to <coughs> trying to coordinate a date for that relative to um, the upcoming budget in particular, as well as um, multi-board meeting with the Planning Commission and the DDA. The yard waste pickup will begin the week of April 1st. Mm. And let's see, Susie Steck is going to be joining the board of the chamber. The planning commission, um, the meetings again are recorded and I believe the mayor pro tem will have some additional information in regards to what's going on there. The last meeting of SACWA, which is the Water Authority and SACRA, which is the Recycling Authority, was held here at City Hall, so we were able to host them. And there is a number of events coming up, including that I will be attending the Capitol Conference tomorrow and Wednesday. I believe a couple of you are going to be there as well. Um, Congresswoman um, Brenda Lawrence is still holding her mobile town halls here at, at City Hall, and the next one will be Thursday, March 28th from 1 to 3 p.m. Household Hazardous Waste Day is going to be scheduled for April 27th. Susie Steck is going to have a business roundtable where you can meet and greet her as well as um, get some additional resources information that's available for local businesses. That's going to be on April 3rd from 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. here in City Hall. The much-awaited Breakfast with the Bunny and Egg Hunt is going to be on Saturday, April 13th from 9.30 to 11.30 a.m. Tickets are $7 per person and free for children under the age of one. You can get those here at City Hall. And we're still planning on the Senior Night Out, April 26th, which is a formal event for the <coughs> seniors of senior age as opposed to high school seniors. <laughs> <laughs> and that concludes my report. Thank you. City Attorney, do you have anything for the good of the cause? Nothing for me this evening. Can I ask yep. Cheryl, real quick, how often is that e-newsletter going to come out? <coughs> At least once a month. Um, it depends on what needs to get out quickly. Um, most likely more often than that. Thank you. So planning commission, um, I was not able to attend the last planning commission meeting, special meeting that I called and asked for. Um, but this is a great plug for the reason why we started recording the meetings because late last night I watched the meeting and was able to virtually attend, uh, although nobody listened to me when I made comments. But um, we, the reason why we wanted that special meeting is uh, uh, Panera, uh, the, the, the building owner of, of, of for Panera, where Panera currently resides, uh, is working with us to try to see if there's a way that we can include a drive-through for Panera. Uh, as I explained, I think at the last uh, council meeting, uh, the Panera is located in what's known as our Village Center District, uh, which is designed to be, for, for our master plan, to be a, a walkable district and having a drive-through in the, um, uh, which is a, a car, very car intensive use in a walkable district really is, is incongruent or uh, it doesn't really make sense. So we're looking at ways that we might be able to accommodate them. We haven't decided anything. The special meeting was, was to discuss what options the uh, applicant would have to uh, apply for uh, a, a drive-through, one of which would be a, uh, which would require the planning commission to uh, change the zone, zoning ordinance to allow a drive-through with a special land use, um, and then they would have to uh, submit a site plan for that. Uh, the other option we were talking through was a planned unit development, which is a tool that we could add uh, to our zoning, which would allow a uh, applicant to uh, up, up put together a site plan, but it would it would essentially result in a contract between the city and the uh, applicant. And the idea is, is not to get around the zoning ordinances, but to allow some flexibility in, in the zoning in return for a community benefit back from the applicant. So for example, with, with respect to Panera, um, it could be that we 
allow them uh, a drive through if, if we can work it out on that on that particular property and uh, and in return they provide for more outdoor eating space or a bike rack or you know picnic tables or something that would help promote the kind of walkability and the the concept and the spirit of the the, the village center so we're looking at that um, and our next steps are, are to uh, uh, have our city planner um, work on creating language uh, to modify both the, to modify the zoning um, the zoning laws to uh, allow that use with a special land use as well as putting together uh, language for uh, the PUD the planned uh, unit development tool and they're going to present both of those at our at our next meeting and the reason why we're having them do both of them is Whatever we do, it needs to be done relatively quickly because Panera is, is actively making a decision and actively looking at other locations not in Lathrop Village. So in order to move quickly, we're having them prepare both sets of language. So either way, we, if, if we decide to go that way, either way, it's, it's ready and ready to go. So, and again, we invite you to come to those meetings, share your input, um, watch them on TV, contact us, and that's it. Thank you. So. We haven't decided that yet. Uh, we were trying. We're trying to move as quickly as possible. And, and I, I know at the end of the meeting, at least as I saw it on TV, and I, apparently it, that conversation carried after the camera went carried on after the camera went off. Um, but they're trying to see if there's a way to move it up a little bit so we don't have to wait another month before we meet again. And, I, and I, my guess is, is there probably will be some special meetings uh, shortly after that because if we move at the, the pace of our scheduled meetings. We won't come to a, a decision until probably sometime early summer, and that's too late for that. So. so I did attend the um, annual, this is regarding my sim SimCon. I did attend the annual uh, general meeting this past uh, Thursday. And um, during that time, the governor presented her 45 cent <laughs> gas hike. Heard, uh, went through is actually the second time Thursday that I heard the, the gas hike so she's supposed to come closer to us so that the residents can also sit in and um, I do have some things that I could say but I don't want to necessarily represent say it all you need to hear from her it's a it's a great idea but the gas the gas tax was discussed very high very highly so she's talking about 15 cents every six months up until uh, October 20, October 1st, 20th, which will equal 45 cents. So, um, but she was, she was very well received. Um, also, we're still working on getting some bike signage here in Lathrop, and Southfield has agreed to kind of work with us. I also talked to Matt from Berkeley to see how we can uh, do some work with the three cities uh, coming together, Simcog, has grants uh, for us to take advantage of. And, and we are looking into it now to see how feasible it is for us. But hopefully we'll have more information for you from that. And um, that's it. Thank you. Do you all have anything? Yeah, just uh, two things. So um, Cheryl and I uh, met um, leading up to um, the hiring of uh, our new Parks and Rec person and we wanted to kind of be on the same page for um, music in the park which is which uh, happens every year in Lathrop so it happens every Wednesday I'm not sure when the first one is June 26 June 26 Lord Yancey. Yancey. Yancey yes Lord Yancey, Lord Yancey. okay <laughs> so we we have the lineup pretty much set um, we're just finalizing a few things and we're trying to figure out if we're gonna have a signature event uh, in Lathrop Village but um, we met, we kind of finalized the schedule, and everything appeared to be uh, in working order. So um, once this new person is on board, then uh, that person will then take the reins to that and, and also do other park and recreation type events as well. Yeah, that's the first one. And the second one is, um, and this is just a question for you, because um, I think uh, um, Tringali uh, the the pickup for uh, twigs and, and shrubs mm -hmm. um, I don't think they have picked up in probably a week and a half or two weeks they were supposed to pick up they usually pick up in the morning I don't think they did that this morning or last or last week so if we can now is that the service that starts up on April 1st 
No, no, not that service. The service uh, for uh, yard yard waste. So yes. that would be um, tr tree limbs, because they typically go through and pick up tree limbs in in Lathrop. Yeah, that's well, usually in the summer, isn't it? Yeah. Spring, late, early spring through. They do it all the time. They actually, they do it all the time. Things. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Right. Okay. It's two yeah. different things. Yeah, so they do it all the time. So um, they have missed a couple of times now. It's on so. Fridays. It, oh, now it's on Fridays? They changed yes. it on Fridays. Wow. Okay. Mm. They haven't picked up in a couple weeks. <laughs> <laughs> they haven't picked up in a couple weeks. So if we can try to figure out when their schedule is. Because okay. I know we've had some crazy weather, so maybe they're trying to catch up or so. Uh, that's it for me. Anyone else? Um, so just to address some things that have um, been going on that we all are aware of, of the misinformation that has been kind of floating around on Facebook, um, is number one, just to reiterate again, when it comes to the villager, um, it's, it's my um, bad habit for me to respond, but we are not supposed to be responding on Villager per our uh, city attorney begged us on a regular <laughs> basis to stop. Um, but to um, get in touch with us is to go on the city's um, Facebook page, um, to go to the city website. Um, if you go on the city's website, every single one of our um, email addresses is there also and you can email us and I promise you that somebody is going to get back with you at some point. Um, I know that there's a lot of changes that's going on right now, but um, change is inevitable. And if you want to grow, you have to change. And with change comes conflict. And with conflict comes growth. So, I mean, everybody's not going to be happy. I understand that. Um, if you would like to talk about it, if you want to meet with me or meet with anybody, I'm 100% I'm sure that anybody will set a schedule, some time with you, to sit with you, even if you're watching at home in the audience, and, and we have no problem. Maybe we'll even set up something at Panera as long as... <laughs> As long as it's here. <laughs> um, set something up at Panera. I know that someone actually already set something up, which I don't know if I'm walking into the lion's cage or not, but someone already set something up at their home for their, rest, for their neighbors to come over, for me to come over there and talk with them. I have no problem with doing any of that, as I think that all the council people are too awesome. Um, one thing that I do want to kind of close with, because it really touched my heart, um, I went to the Council on American Islamic... Oh, I thought, uh, relations, thank relations. you. I was like, I almost had it yesterday. And um, to talk about New Zealand, um, it's, it really bothered me, as it probably bothered everyone else. Because if you realize, that is not the first time that um, there has been a terrorist act while people are worshiping. And if you also realize, it may not be um, Hispanics this time, it may not be African Americans this time, it may not be Muslims this time. Just know, as the New Zealand Prime Minister said, they are us. We are them. And so you have to have a tolerance with each other because it may not be your race, faith, or sexual orientation today, but it could be you tomorrow. And so one thing that I love about Lathrop and the reason why I moved here is because just even looking around in the room right now, this is what we have. We are inclusive, we are diverse, and I'm hoping as we move forward that we will learn that hate has no place in Lathrop Village. And I, I just, I um, ask everybody to pray for the families and the loved ones in New Zealand and um, just know that, you know, this is by the grace of God that there go I. So that's um, basically all I wanted to say about that. I'm sorry I could get on the on the soapbox really badly about that, but I, I'll, I won't. So on that note, anything else for anybody? We'll take a motion to adjourn. So, so move, second. second. It is moved to second. We are adjourned. Thank you. Thank you.